Hey guys, what's going on? Coach Justin here from Ultimate Baseball Training. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about how to stop dropping your back shoulder. I know it's really frustrating. I think every baseball player has been there at some point in their career. It's really frustrating when a fastball right over the middle of the plate, a pitch that you should absolutely crush, you know, you foul it weakly off to the, the first base side if you're a right-handed hitter and you know you you foul out the first baseman catches it or if you just hit like weak flares to the second baseman or really shallow pop-ups because you're dropping your back shoulder it's really annoying and it's frustrating because you're like man my timing was good my mental approach was good i just can't figure out why do i keep hitting pop-ups why is my back shoulder dropping okay so that's exactly what we're going to talk about in today's video how to avoid dropping your back shoulder, how to fix it, some things that people do, um, some things that you can apply into your game to really work on not dropping your back shoulder. So without further ado, let's hop right into the video. All right, so the very first point that I wanna make in this video is a lot of players have a misconception about dropping the back shoulder and they think somehow that your back shoulder should never drop and so your swing should I, I don't know what they think it should look like down like this probably directly to the ball and that's what a lot of coaches used to teach back before we had you know high speed video and things like that they would teach you know in a direct path down straight to the ball like this and obviously in that case my back shoulder doesn't drop but nobody hits like that. And if you watch any major league hitter, okay, in the super slow-mo that's really cool to watch on TV, you'll notice that their back shoulder actually does drop a little bit, okay? They do, you know, especially at the point of contact, their back shoulder is definitely lower than their front shoulder. They do drop it down and they do have some tilt here. They're, they create an access uh, with their body to swing around. So dropping your back shoulder, having your back shoulder a little bit lower than your front shoulder, that's not bad mechanics. That's actually the way it should be, okay? So just understand that, you know, if your very first move ever is, is dropping your back shoulder a ton and your front elbow is chicken winged up and this is the way you look, obviously that's not good. But just realize major league players, their back shoulder at the point of contact is lower than, than their front shoulder. And whatever you do, do not try to swing like I was earlier. Do not try to swing down on the baseball. I heard a coach one time say that, you know, he was instructing some youth players and telling them that they should, you know, swing like they're buckling a seatbelt. Okay, so if you're in the, it'd be the passenger side, right? And you're buckling a seatbelt. And I just thought, what a terrible piece of hitting advice. And, you know, a lot of coaches still preach this, but it just doesn't make sense when you look at the angles, right? A, a pitcher is standing on a mound, so he's taller than the hitter to begin with, and he's throwing the ball typically from up here, and he's throwing the ball in a downward plane into the strike zone. So if you swing down as well, there's only one point of intersection, and this is not theory, it's not up for debate, it's true. If you swing down, if you swing like this down towards the ball, there's only one point of intersection, so your timing has to be absolutely perfect. If you're a little late, if you're a little early, Good luck, right? But even if you are perfectly on time and you're swinging down like this, what is this kind of swing gonna produce, okay? This is a little exaggerated. Even if it's like this, what is that swing gonna produce? It's gonna produce a chopping ground ball, you're gonna beat the ball into the ground. Is that what we want? Obviously not, right? So, you know, when you think about, um, you know, just angles, if the pitcher is throwing on a downward plane, then we wanna do equal and opposite, right? So we wanna actually swing on a very slight, upward plane so we can match that plane our bat is on plane with the pitch for a long period of time we're staying in the zone through a long period of time so we can hit those hard line drives in the gaps and hit those bombs right all right so i'm glad we cleared that up don't try to swing down on the baseball next thing i want to talk about this is a, th a thing that i see a lot with younger hitters is their elbows do not remain the same distance apart so you see the distance between my elbows here they don't remain the same distance apart throughout their entire swing and they should Okay, so a lot of younger players have some bad mechanics where their elbows start out like this and then their elbows get closer together and you see how the bat is just kind of dragging behind like this. Obviously, we don't want that. We don't want the reverse where somehow, you know, their elbows get further apart, right? We want our elbows throughout the entire swing from the setup. If I set up like this, we want our elbows to remain the same distance apart. Notice my elbows are not changing distance. They're the same distance apart throughout my entire swing until further after contact when we get into this power V position. 
So that's a big thing, guys. Work on keeping your elbows the same distance apart, okay? And it really starts with your stance. You know, I recommend um, just for learning this off the tee and stuff, put the handle of your bat on your neck, knob facing the catcher, um, and your elbow. You know, some players like it a little more up. Some players like it a little bit more down. But I think as long as you're not having it above your shoulder, you're in good shape, okay? But just realize that this starting position, your elbows should not change. That's immediately gonna help you with not dropping your back shoulder, okay? Because sometimes if our elbows are up too high or too low, um, or if our elbows change distance throughout our swing, that's gonna cause some, some really bad habits. So make sure your elbows are staying the same distance throughout your swing. All right, so if I face you, all right, I'm gonna go through the swing just in slow motion and I'm gonna show you, okay, as I load and as my front foot lands, my front shoulder is slightly down like this. That's the way that it should be. Your eyes are locked in on the pitcher on the ball, right? My front shoulder is slightly down. But then when my front heel begins to drop, right, then we begin to create this axis to swing around. And that's when we start having a little bit of tilt. Okay, our, our back elbow kind of drops into what, what we like to call the slot, right? And that's when you have a little bit of back shoulder drop. So you're in the swing, it goes from your front shoulder being slightly down like this and your back shoulder being up to as you progress through your swing, it kind of switches, right? And then we obviously get to the point of contact and finish our swing, right? But just know that you know the back shoulder might start a little bit up and then it goes down, but dropping your back shoulder sometimes is not a bad thing. All professional players have that little bit of tilt that they create. All right, so real quick, let's get into some other causes of dropping your back shoulder. One of them, I'm gonna face this way, one of them is when you get to front foot landing if your bat is either flat or it's down like this. So if I turn this way, if my bat at landing is either flat or if it's down like this, a lot of the times that's gonna cause us to make our first move to be you know, really just dropping that back shoulder, dropping the bat head. So we wanna avoid that. Again, go back to what I just mentioned a little bit earlier, right? A great way to, to learn this um, is to face you know, the knob of your bat towards the catcher and at, at launch, make sure that it's like that. Obviously, my bat is at a decent angle like this. Um, if you make sure that your knob is facing the catcher, there's no way that your bat can be flat or like this, right? My knob's facing the sky, my knob's facing that way. If my knob is facing the catcher, my bat is gonna be at a good angle. So that's an easy fix right there. All right, next thing, if your front elbow right here at front foot landing, if it's tucked in like this, okay? If it's like hyper tucked in, or if it's high like this, both of those are gonna cause you to drop your back shoulder. So I would recommend getting somebody to film you, do some video of you, even if it's just on an iPhone or whatever, do it in slow motion so you can kind of see, uh, you know, what is going on in your swing, okay? But, you know, if you see that at your front foot landing, if your, your front elbow is hyper kind of tucked in like this, then obviously your first move, because this is a very awkward position, your first move is gonna be to drop that back shoulder, right? And vice versa, if your front elbow, if you kind of chicken wing and do this, and maybe a lot of players do this because they don't want to get hit by the pitch, they're kind of afraid of the ball, so they put their elbow up like this to block. Obviously, you can already see that my back shoulder first move is dropping, my barrel's dropping, and then from there, all that's left is you know hitting those weak flare pop-ups. All right, so those are some causes, and the fix I would recommend, you know, getting yourself on video or getting your player on video. Also, grabbing a tee and bringing it to the highest setting because players that drop their back shoulder are really gonna struggle with that high pitch, right? So put it to its highest setting and you're gonna have to just work on this through tee work, through front toss, soft toss, BP, work on this high pitch, okay? And if players, you know, if they drop their back shoulder, you're really gonna immediately notice that they're, you know, they're chopping the, the tee right here and they're not gonna be able to hit that baseball. So just work on, you know, having them be able to hit that high pitch, you know, work on all the things that I talked about in this video. And then all of a sudden you're gonna realize, we're not trying to get on top of this pitch, but you're gonna realize they're gonna get on plane with the pitch and they're gonna drive the ball, you know, really hard right over second base. And that's what we're going for in this particular exercise. And the last little mental cue I like to tell players is turn your shoulder through. So put the handle on your neck, knob facing the catcher, right? And all you're gonna work on is we're not gonna bring the bat up here. We're gonna keep the, the handle on our shoulder. We're gonna go into our load and our stride. And then from, here, uh, from there, just tell them to turn their back shoulder through. Turn your back shoulder through, and that's gonna get them into a much better hitting position. 
So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. We covered a lot of information. There's lots of different, you know, causes for why you might be dropping your back shoulder. Just make sure though, you know, obviously if you're hitting those weak fly balls or pop-ups, that might be, you know, you're dropping your back shoulder in a bad way, but realize major league players, they do actually have their back shoulder slightly lower than their front shoulder. That's a good thing, right? We wanna be on plane with the pitch. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Um, and if you want more, I actually created a free bat speed workout for you serious ball players out there. It's a workout that you can go, you can print it out, take it to the field with you, do it three or four times a week, and it's really gonna help you improve your bat speed. So all you have to do to grab that free bat speed workout, click on the very first link below this video in the description. That'll take you to my website. I just need your email address and I will immediately send you that free bat speed workout, okay? So go grab that workout. Be sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up on this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel though, that way you'll never miss a video. We're coming out with new videos every single week. And be sure to get in the comments section. Let me know what do you want the upcoming videos in the future to be like. Do you want more hitting? Do you want more fielding? Do you want more throwing videos? What do you want to see next, all right? Until next time, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.